Thank you so much, you. and there's so much excitement, and I never got clapped so much in my life, so I'm, I'm, I'm so delighted. Big round of applause again for Lucky Ali. Please. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much. Thank you so Good much. Good evening, Lucky, and so, so delighted that you're here with us at People Matters Take a Chat, and we're going to get the chance, as you all know, to hear him sing later, but I think what I'm most excited is we're going to get the opportunity to hear you talk as well. And, and you know Lucky is not only a, a, a songwriter, singer, but in many ways for many of us, he's also a philosopher. And today we not only want to uh, hear you sing, but we also want to learn from you. And that's the objective. Uh, I, that's a very tall order, but I'm here to learn from you. So just ask me whatever you want. All right, let's go, let's go. So, before we start, when we were preparing for this conversation, I was doing a lot of research about the things that you said, the sharings, and a little bit about your life. And I think everyone has had the opportunity to know a lot about your work and your life. And we're going to go a little deeper. And um, we're going to talk about purpose. We're going to talk about some inspirations of creativity. We're going to talk about learning. And uh, we're going to talk about failures as yes. well, and how can we learn from all of you. So we're going to start with the first question. I'm not going to come to the audience for questions as well, so be ready. right? I don't want to monopolize the opportunity, and I'm going to come to all of you for questions as well. So my first invitation, this year's theme of People Matters Take a Chat is rethink what's possible. Yes. And it's an invitation to our community and to each one of us as professionals to look at this pandemic as an opportunity to to really create transformational shifts in our society. So what does rethink what's possible mean to you? Uh, during the pandemic, um, it gave me an opportunity to sit back and um, um, introspect. Uh, many times in our journeys, we hardly get the time to uh, be so caught up with you know, uh, doing the work and uh, we, we seem to forget the basics of um, things. So this is a good lesson for all of us, I think. This pandemic came as, an, um, as a warning, probably, you know, that um, how much we can lose if we are not um, uh, aware of our um, environment, of um, our personal selves, our own... Um, the vibes that we share, you know. Generally, it's about that. Um, I do not understand goals anymore. Yeah. You know, I was telling you um, earlier on. Because I feel it's the journey towards that goal, whether you reach it or you don't reach it. And that's irrelevant. But the quality of the journey yeah. is what matters. Like, success is that. Success is... Um, how you made people feel, you know? What did you mean? They're not going to remember what did you look like or what you wore or what. They're just going to remember how you felt, how they felt, you know? So that is success. So if you make them feel, I mean, just what you're feeling, because if you're feeling good, you're giving the vibe out, and it's like, it's like a butterfly effect. <laughs> When we clap, we really, really clap. Come on. So how do you choose that path of servicing others through your art? And you spoke, in many places, you spoke about uh, something very uh, provocative that you said, we are all sheep, saying we don't know where we're going and combine that with what you just invited us to think, that our purpose in this life is to create experiences for others, and that's what they will remember. How do you choose the feel that you're going to invest to create those experiences? In my case, um, I didn't have choices. They just got thrown onto me. I was born in an, um, uh, a family that was established in cinema, so it was just thought that I would you know, follow my father's footsteps. But, um, of course, I mean, that was a lucrative line. Um, success calling you because you've got strong parents who can, like, push you forward. But if you're not convinced inside, you know, 
you should not do it. You should find something else that you love to do in order to, um, uh, what do you call, achieve that satisfaction. For me, it is about achieving satisfaction. It's not about um, uh, a material uh, kind of... Yeah. Material things do happen on the way. They are, yeah. they are just byproducts. But the larger thing is, you know, um, that journey, as I was saying, yeah. you know. Yeah, so. and it's that journey, aha moment, that one day you say, oh, this is it, or do you think it's a discovery? And how was it for you? It is a um, work in progress. It's yeah. not something that you say that, you know, I've reached. I'm not. I, for me, it's like a big canvas. And I'm just still there, just at that corner. And there's this whole big white canvas to paint yet. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so that's how small this whole thing is, you know. I mean, and how large the entire um, uh, reality is. And we just minuscule. And in that canvas, as you paint uh, your songs, your music, there's something that you mentioned that inspiration is everywhere. Yes. And, and it's anything can become a song. And we all love your music. And if you were to pick up any of those small instances that actually became one of your famous songs, which one will you share with us? Raat Chandni. Um, this was one of the first songs that um, I wrote when I uh, actually felt that love, you know, that I, this is what I want to do. And that was an expression of that. And it was a song of gratefulness. Um, uh, because I feel that I'm very limited in my, um, in my capacity. But then whatever comes, comes from another source that allows you to, um, you know, Excel, and, you know, and those are, that source is what you're grateful to. And what was that one instance or that one inspiration that made that song happen? Heartbreak. Oh. <laughs> well, we're not going to ask for more details, okay? Maybe later, but you know. Well, um, it was that same Sham Savere <laughs> <laughs> song. <laughs> Um, so, um, many times you, um, like you imagine it's going to be a particular way, but reality is something else, you know? So, um, but your young heart doesn't want to accept those limitations. You feel that I can conquer the world and I can, yes, you can conquer the world. Well, why do you want to conquer the world? You want to conquer yourself. You understand, that makes the world. So, this is not Gyan, please forgive me. I, I don't know, I just, <laughs> I just talk when it... Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a lot more questions because we want a lot of this Gyan today, isn't it? Do we want Gyan or not? No. Good, there you are. May I? Yes, please, go ahead. So, let's go with more Gyan. All right, and, and there's one thing when I was uh, listening to all your interviews and, and, and listening to your work, there's something that you mentioned that your songs are messages to yourself. And you also mentioned that the music is also for your expression. And a lot of that is messages that you want to tell yourself, you want to remind yourself. And, and again, inviting you to, and I'm, gonna, I'm sure everyone was going to ask you to sing maybe one or two songs before we actually, actually take you to stage, but if you were to look at maybe some of those messages, those songs that you wrote for yourself, well, which uh, one would those be? Two or three songs that carry a message for Lucky Ali. Oh, they're messages for me even now. Like, Ghar Ko Main Nikla Tanha Akela is actually a futuristic song. It's a song about when I've decided that, ho oh, yeah. you know? Okay. Yeah, and I just want to, like, you know, just do my own thing, like, when I'm not doing it for everyone. Awesome. You know, when I'm doing it for myself, then I know that, okay, I've done my part, I've done my bit, and I need to move on. Because you stay in a place and you stagnate. This is, uh, you know, you, you will stagnate if you just stick in that one place. Even if you're the richest person in the world, you'll stagnate. 
how much ever money you have, you still will stagnate because ultimately it's um, you're holding on to things that that are so uh, uh, what do you call um, the material they they'll go. You understand, but the bigger thing is you understand. I mean, I'm not. I mean, you understand the what I'm trying to express yeah. to you. So. So that's one song. One more song that it's a message for yourself even today. Um, Rachani. Rachani is about. Um, I can sing it for you. Please forgive me. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll wait. We'll wait. That's my son asking yeah. me if I'm ready to come down for the talk. Okay. <laughs> I'm already in the conversation. Come. <laughs> There you are. Now they can, he can hear the club saying, okay, that is on stage. Good. Mm. So go ahead. Yes. Um. Rat chandani chai hui hai Chamak raha hai tara Thandi, thandi ये पुरवाई सोचो किसने बनाया हो तुम ही हो पहले तुम ही हो आखिर तुम ही से सारा जहाँ तुम ही से माँबाप तुम ही से बचपन तुम ही से समान so it's in the simple things wow. that everything is. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for yeah. this gift. Thank you very, very much. So I want to come to you in a minute for questions. So be ready. Any questions from the audience we have? Keep your hands up. If we can just distribute some mics, we'll take three questions all in one go, and we'll try to kind of answer them. Yeah, are you with me? Yeah, yeah. All right, awesome. But before I go to you, just get the mics. You talk always about failure being a gift. Yes. And, and I think in the corporate world, we don't seem to get that because we are all scared about failure. So what can we learn from you? I went to a school called Bombay Scottish of Nijin in Bombay after my Missouri uh, tenure. Uh, in Missouri, all I did was, um, I mean, most of the things I did was bunk school. <laughs> and my friends would proxy for me. And Mrs. Wood, she loved me very much, my teacher, my class teacher. And um, she failed me because, <laughs> she failed me because I was, you know, I, I just didn't perform. I mean, I, I didn't do what I was meant to do anyways. So when I came to Bombay, um, I was taken to the school, Bombay Scottish School, and Mr. Gamaliel, the old principal, he says, so which class do you go to now? So I said, well, I go to the eighth, because I was in the seventh. And he says, did you pass? And I said, of course. And um, class went on for about a couple of months, and then my report card came from Missouri. And then he came to class and surprised me, you know, and he says, uh, Maksud, that's my real name, Maksud came to me to my office. And he said, um, that standard eight is actually very difficult for him. So he wants to go back to the seventh. And wow. <laughs> that was a lesson for me because it was embarrassing. I mean, there was, Dimple Kapadia in the same class. <laughs> there was Biju in that same class, and there were all these people, and then I was like dirt, and they were doing this to me, you know. <laughs> I mean, that was terrible. But it was something that you, nature, you know, if you always, if you try to finger nature, nature will finger you back. You know, it'll, um, it doesn't like, uh, for example, it doesn't like anyone to be a hero over it because nature is the hero. So we should know our limitations. And that comes with 
being honest, I wasn't honest and that was a big lesson for me of embarrassment. Another one was when I thought I could just go on stage and anybody's stage and sing a song. That day when I went on to stage, it was someone else's stage and I said, I want to sing. I said, okay, come sing. I sang everything basur. So bad that everybody was laughing at me. You know, and that, that felt bad. I, I had overstepped my, uh, what do you call, uh, ability. You know, I was trying to be some, someone whom I was not, at least not at that time. So, we got to take baby steps as we uh, walk in this journey and give love to people and take love from people as you grow, you know. So this is what it is like. And don't feel bad if you fail, because if you don't fail, you cannot pass. If you don't fall down, you will not want to get up. You have to get up if you fall down, utho or chalo. You know, however far that takes you, at least you got up. You know, it's your own dignity, it's your own self-respect that, that, you know, pushes you to, you know, want to excel, want to, uh, you know, I need to do this for my own soul. You know, I need to be the best that I can be because I'll just be here once. Beyond this, I, there's no more chances. Beautiful, beautiful. Keep going and better version of yourself as you go forward. Inshallah. All right, let's go. Big round of applause once again. And let's hear some of those questions. Whoever has the mic. All right, there you go. So if you want to introduce yourself, go ahead. Hi, my name is Satya. Hi, sir. So I'm a headhunter. And generally in my profession, I see people after 50 or 55, they become irrelevant. I see you 63, still you are relevant. What is that reason? What is the cause for that irrelevancy? Wonderful. Why are you relevant? Relevance. Okay, I'm going to take three questions in one go because I think we'll try to intertwine them. Okay. I've just released a song oh. and it's called Mohabbat Zindagi oh. or Zindagi Se Mohabbat. So love is life and to love life, you know, life is love. I think that's what it is. Wonderful, so. wonderful. So here you got your answer, Satya. Thank you so much. All right, let's take, you have the mic, go ahead. Just uh, quickly introduce yourself. Just the gentleman, I'm on, coming to you. Hello, yes, yeah, on, yeah, hello, all, both of you. It's lucky to listen lucky this evening. Yeah, that's a name, not a fortune for me. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a fortune for all the audience it's a sitting here. For us too. My it's name an is honor. Neeraj Gupta, and uh, since we are out from the HR community, and HR community is facing a lot of challenge for a lot of people are resigning, joining other companies, and yeah, we need to do a lot of work. <laughs> so there's so yeah. much pain in these comments. Yes, like, for oh. this pain, what song you suggest? So the oh. pain will go down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Song for the soul. All right, I'm coming to you. Go ahead, Lucky, please. Dil mm. <laughs> Yeah, but that's a romantic song. I've got another track for that. But that's. Um, Dekh lo, ab jo main kehne chala, muke, bal kisko gir na pada. कुछ कहने के लिए दिल की भी मर्जी हो लव्जों के आने में भी दिल की कोई अर्जी हो पर ना कर से पछताएगा खुद की नजर से गिर जाएगा कि सर के फिर ना मुस्कुराएगा ओले लाइक लाइक like we say in my country, ole, right? Ole. <laughs> Wonderful. Go ahead, please. Thank you so much for uh, giving this opportunity. And it's really lucky that uh, all of the audience, and thank you, Esther, for bringing him in front of me. Uh, well, 
as a part of the HR fraternity and out of my passion, I do career coaching. So most of the students, they have a you know, passion towards singing or some music. But when the parents, they would like, uh, you know, they would be more interested only for medical and engineering. This is a stigma that we have as a parents. So what is your advice to the young people who would like to pursue their career in music or as a vocal music or as an instrumental? How can we motivate them and how can we change the paradigm of their parents? Okay, um, I had this problem with my parents. You know, my father wanted me to be an actor. I wanted to be a singer. So, and he looked down upon my talent at that time because, you know, you, you don't know singing in front of all those people, you're going to go and sing, you know, that kind of carry on. But I feel if you have a passion, you should allow children to do it, you know, to allow them to grow within that passion because that would only help them in the other fields, you know, is um, parents and children need to have that um, understanding um, where um, you do something that you can please your parents with. Your parents want you to be educated. Okay, so you do that, but you also want to do your music. So play in a band, you know, but keep it not serious. I mean, keep it because you enjoy it, not because you're going to want to be a star tomorrow or you're going to make it in the industry or, you know, there should be a balance. I didn't know if I was going to be anything in the industry. You know, they used to tell me your songs are different, you know, they won't work here in India. And I said, okay, well, at least, you know, we got to release and whatever happened, happened. So if you, uh, parents and um, there has to be this understanding between growing children and children today are faced with a lot of pressures. There's a lot of peer pressure and wanting to be like, their neighbor next door, you know, because he has a better PlayStation or, you know, things like that. And sometimes parents find it difficult to, um, you know, give in to their children's needs and, you know, demands or whatever. But all those things can be balanced out. It's just how you present it. It's how you talk to them. It's how you explain yourself. So. I think we could be with Lucky Ali the whole evening and tomorrow also. A big round of applause once again and I'm going to take just last question because yeah, all of us are ready to take you to the concert hall but sure. the last question, go ahead. Hey, hi Lucky, this is Harmeet, I'm from Zagal. Hi. Uh, big fan moment because I've been hearing you for a long time. So I'll not try to ask you a question force-fitting in HR, I'm going to be completely <coughs> non-HR. Why have you divorced Bollywood? Um. Bollywood um, was never something serious for me. The name itself is not serious. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, they used to make great films at one time, but then something else took over. But I think there's a re revival. So I don't know. I've since then moved on, so. So my last question is going to be, um, and one of your reflections was as, as you grow older, the dots are connecting in oh, your yeah. life and it's helping you decide the steps that you took, you take every day. So what will Lucky Ali tell younger Lucky Ali? What will you tell your younger self? See, I ha I've, I'm faced with many paradoxes. Like, um, for example, you said you join the dots. Frankly speaking, I have dots on my feet that I need to join or when I join them, they become Orion or they become Ursa Major. Not joking, seriously. So, there's still questions, you never know the answers. You know, you still got, there's this, there's this quest. If you're satisfied with your life and everything is all right, then you should sit down. But if you're still questing, if you're still seeking, you know, the dots still need to be joined, so. So what will be the message you tell your younger self. Keep on joining the dots. Keep on looking <laughs> for the solution, the, uh, the solution that makes sense. You know, it should be comprehensive. It should make sense. It should not be something that's just, oh, it, this doesn't make, it should show something. So, 
आई डोंट नो मैंने सही समझाया नहीं समझाया वंडरफुल थैंक यू सो मच लकी आली सिंगर सॉन्ग राइटर फिलोसोफर एंड अ बिग बिग राउंड ऑफ अप्लॉज वंस अगेन